Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us today study about the application and the importance of various factors that affect the action of enzymes. So, as we all know, enzymes are biocatalysts present in our system, and every enzyme is, has a very important role to play in various metabolic processes. And any of these enzymes, if they are deficient or not functioning effectively, they can lead to serious problems or metabolic disorders. So, it is very important to understand not only to understand the normal health and not only also to understand the disease processes by which virtue of which we can try to cure or help a person who is having a problem. So, the objective of this uh, class will be to describe the factors affecting the enzyme action including the definition of significance of the KM and Vmax this Michael's constant and the maximal velocity of enzyme action. So, the definition of enzyme kinetics means the quantitative measure of the rates of enzyme catalyzed reactions and the factors that affect these rates. This is nothing but the enzyme kinetics what actually explains the ray, uh, factors which affects the enzyme action. So, let us first see one by one. The first one will be the substrate concentration. So, as you can see here, we have a graph here, the x axis has the substrate concentration and the y axis has the velocity of enzyme action. So, as you can see this graph has three phases, phase A, phase B, and phase C. In between, we have a dotted line in the middle of uh, the, the upper line and the base line that represents the substrate concentration at the half maximum velocity. The uppermost dotted line represents the maximum velocity, that means the velocity where the enzyme reaches the maximum point. So, the the, the point at which the half maximal velocity is extrapolated from the graph to the x axis represents uh, the Km value. Km is the Michael's constant, it is nothing but the substrate concentration at half maximal velocity. This will uh, tell us about the affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate. That means, Whenever this Km value is less, that means the enzyme has maximum affinity for the substrate. That means, it is an inverse relationship. Now, let us see this various individual phases, what exactly happens. Let us see the phase A, the first phase. That is, uh, uh, wherein in this phase, when the enzyme reaction starts, we have surplus of the enzyme. This is a curved uh, yellow. Uh, uh, figure represents the enzyme and the red uh, dotted one represents the substrate. In the first phase, as the enzyme is in surplus in the system, we have just added the substrate into the uh, system. So, that at this point, we have plenty of enzyme available to react, interact with the substrate. That means, the reaction is linear. That means, as and when you start increasing the substrates, proportionate to that, uh, the velocity of reaction also increases proportionally. So, this because of the excess availability of the enzyme free site, this is called free active site, wherein the substrate binds, the reaction is directly proportional and very much linear. This is called as the first order that means reaction is in the first order is very much linear most of the most of the enzyme catalyzed reaction the velocity is measured at this phase because we can directly have an equation 
and have a measure of enzyme activity. When you go to the next phase, the phase B, in this phase B, what happens is, is uh, as more and more substrate coming into the picture. At this point, the availability of the free site, active sites are comparatively less as compared to the phase A. So, almost that it more or less they are equalizes. At this point, the rate of reaction also increases as the substrate concentration is increasing, but anyhow it is not as proportional to that is observed in phase A. So, this, uh, this part of the curve we have something called mixed order kinetics. Now, come to the last phase, the phase C. Here, as more and more substrate come into the picture, the availability of enzyme remains the same. All enzymes are super saturated, their active sites are super saturated with the substrate and no more enzyme is available to interact with the substrate. So, here, no, more, no, uh, no matter how much more substrate you add to the system, the rate of reactions will no more increase. That means, it reaches a plateau or straight line and that is also called as maximum enzyme velocity or V max. So, here no, no matter how much more substrate you add to the system, reaction velocity remains the same. So, same thing is depicted here. We have the first phase, it is called as the first order kinetics wherein the rate of reaction is directly proportional and most of the our uh, uh, kits or uh, estimation in the lab for whatever measurement you do, uh, they will uh, bag on this phase of the reaction because here the rate is very much linear and easy to have a calculation. Whereas, the mixed order kinetics even though rate is increasing, it is not very much proportional and we have the final phase the zero order wherein no, ma no matter how much substrate is coming, rate remains the same. So, this is the effect of substrate concentration on velocity of enzyme action. So, let us see what is an application for this knowledge. So, first is the michaels menten equation. michaels menten equation uh, relates the initial velocity to the substrate constant. This is, this is depicted by V i, V i is the initial velocity is equivalent to V max into substrate concentration over K m plus the substrate concentration. And uh, one more application is one of the important disorder, a type of diabetes called as MODY, M O D Y, nothing but maturity onset of diabetes of young, wherein we see, we observe that uh, glucokinase enzyme, which is important enzyme required for initial release of insulin from the beta cells, is both K m as well as V max are reduced. That means, the capacity affinity as well as the maximum velocity of this enzyme gets reduced genetically, due to which the release of insulin for a any given uh, blood level is comparatively less that leads to a diabetes. Now, let us see the next important uh, uh, factor which influences the rate of enzyme reaction. So, before going to that, let us see how in the first place enzyme react with the substrate. As you can see in this graph, as the a normal reaction, you can see that uh, the dotted line here, whenever you want to have an interaction between two substrates, there is a resistance or a barrier in nature, it does not try to mix easily. So, what we do in natural system is, we will try to increase the temperature. Good example being, if you want to make a tea, a cup of tea, if we add a uh, water, milk, sugar, tea powder and wait for how many long hours also tea will not happen because 
every component of the tea will not ready to mix with each other there is a resistance so how to overcome that so normally what we will do we will heat up the pan so automatically because of the increasing the energy level in the system it will forcefully mix and form a tea but in our biological system we are isothermic animals we cannot increase our body temperature to make the reaction happen so in this context the enzyme the beautiful biological catalyst came into help comes to help what they will do they will reduce the you can see that uh, graph below here you can see it will significantly has reduced the amount of energy required to reach a transition state transition state means at the inevitable state wherein substrates should will be forced to bind with each other to form a reaction so in a biological system enzymes will do this possible without raising the temperature so that is one of the important uh, mechanism of enzyme action so how this extrapolates to the next important factor this effect of temperature on the enzyme action outside our human biological system what happens here is as you increase the temperature so you can see the temperature is on the x axis rate of enzyme reaction is on the y axis as you can see in this graph as you can increase the temperature the rate of reaction also increases proportionately till one point after this point there will be a sudden drop in the rate of reaction how to explain this in the first phase you can see in the which is uh, colored in the blue color what happens is as the temperature is increase the kinetic energy of the molecules which are supposed to interact with each other molecules means the substrate in this context will increase that means there will be more that they will be actively moving like you can see in a boiling water there will be bubbling something like that there is kinetic energy of the molecule increase that leads to increase collision probabilities they will start colliding randomly with each other so that increases the rate of reaction but till after some time one point is reached that is called as optimum temperature for a given enzyme this is again a signature for every given enzyme but all enzymes present in our biological system will not be able to act more than a temperature of around 40 degrees because that is our normal regulated temperature after that point there is a sudden drop in the rate of reaction how this can be explained this can be explained by uh, proteins i know that every enzyme is a protein the proteins as you all know will get denatured by increase in temperature so here what happens is the enzyme loses its structure because of the denaturation and there is a sudden drop in rate of reaction now what is application for this knowledge so freezing the best example we know is freezing freezing means whenever you want to preserve a food for longer duration whatever you can take from whether vegetables or fruits or milk whatever you say if you freeze it if you know that by reducing the temperature the rate of reaction also decreases that means even the bacteria enzymes is supposed to cause decaying of this food their enzymes also have lesser action even though bacteria may be there on the food system they will not be able to do the proper action so food is relatively not spoiled or preserved on for a longer duration next important is the boiling the reverse of this so all of us know that in, a, in our daily routine we boil the milk when you boil the milk or sometimes it is called pasteurization is nothing but you boil the milk it has a longer shelf life all of you might have seen uh, uh, that uh, good life milk which is available in the market which is kept at a normal temperature in spite of that it is not getting spoiled the very reason is here by rapid heating we are going to kill 
all the organisms including the bacteria present uh, which may be present in a given food item so that it is become becomes sterile so it is no more uh, uh, vulnerable for getting uh, damage or decaying so next important is the important uh, uh, factor is the enzyme concentration in biological system the enzyme concentration will always be constant it will not most of our time it will not be a limiting factor because most of the time we have a more number of enzymes rather than the substrate at a, any given time so here what happens is when our enzyme concentration increases the rate of enzyme velocity increases proportionately unlike the previous graph which we saw which has, this graph has a uh, enzyme velocity on the y axis enzyme concentration on the x axis and the rate of reaction increases very much linearly this is unlike the previous graph this is because in this case if you compare with the previous graph enzyme is available in the unlimited quantity that means at any given point at any given point amount of active site available for action interaction with the substrate is surplus so whenever you go on adding uh, more enzymes there chance of getting more reaction so hence the uh, uh, reaction rate of reaction increases proportionately uh, to the uh, as the increase in enzyme concentration so what happens is as is depicted here in this uh, graph you can see in this diagram enzymes are always available free active site is always available free for interacting with the substrate next important uh, factor which uh, can influence the rate of enzyme reaction is the ph so as is shown in this diagram we will get a bell shaped curve if you plot ph on the x axis enzyme velocity on the y axis we will get a bell shaped curve how to explain this the explanation for this graph is the the peak point of this graph is called as optimum ph this optimum ph is a signature for any given enzyme that means so much so we can identify or isolate an enzyme any any biological system or a mixture of enzymes using is a ph optimum ph that means for every enzyme it has its different optimum ph even though all these enzymes are present in the same biological system so good example being the gastric ph versus the intestinal ph as all of you know gastric ph is very acidic 1 to 2 and uh, the intestinal ph is almost alkaline that is 6 to 8 but the, those enzymes which are present in the gastric juice can act only at a very low ph minute the gastric juice comes into the intestine rapidly they get inactivated whereas those enzymes which are present in the intestinal juice are designed to function optimally only in alkaline ph so how to explain this phenomenon so what uh, we science understood is whenever a substrate or enzyme have a interaction both the substrate and the enzyme have some amino acid residues because all of you know that enzymes are protein in nature so they have some residues which have charges these charges depend on the surrounding ph of the medium whenever you change the ph the net charge on the surface of any given protein also changes and because of the negative charge attract and same charges repel as a uh, net uh, net charge on this residues will change that will significantly affect the affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate in this diagram you can see the yellow color what you can see is an enzyme and what you can see in the blue color is a substrate so whenever ph changes these uh, amino acids residues which are present in the active site 
their net charge on the surface changes that will lead to significant change in the rate of reaction. So, what it means is if you go to the previous slide uh, on either side means at the optimum pH that uh, uh, net charges present on this active site is so optimum for uh, interaction of substrate and enzyme. Any deviation either increase or decrease of the pH from the optimum point, it will change the net charge on the active site that will lead to fall in the rate of reaction. So, these are the some optimum pHs of some enzymes. You can see here, we have the pepsin which is the main enzyme of the gastric juice. It is optimally active in pH 1.5 to 2.5, whereas we have uh, pancreatic enzymes which is present in intestinal juice which is op active around pH range 4 to 10 is the alkaline side. Now, what is the application of this uh, knowledge? Application of effect of pH on the enzyme action. So, gastric as already mentioned, gastric and pancreatic enzymes, they will operate on extreme pHs. So, something called food preservation technique, lying. Lying is nothing but you preserve the food by adding sodium hydroxide. That is basically based on the knowledge that sodium hydroxide is highly alkaline. This will make the bacterial enzymes inactive. So, that leads to preservation. So, some food additives, they will especially sometimes they will add some uh, uh, chemicals with either which will influence the pH significantly. Good example being the vinegar is adding for pickling of the food or what we pickle we prepare. Vinegar is again acidic. So, it decreases the pH significantly that will lead to decrease in activity of some enzymes present in the bacteria which supposed to probably can decay the food item that leads to longer preservation of this food. So, next comes the next important factor which can influence the enzyme action. You can see this diagram. It is a before I can explain the factor, I hope you will be able to understand what I am trying to say. You can see on the left hand side and the right hand side, this is a typical simple depiction of the ball wall mechanism which will be operating in our overhead tank. Whenever the tank gets full, this uh, that ball or the whatever is there here, it gets elevated and it blocks the opening and automatically the tank filling stops. Whenever the tank filling tank becomes empty because of the hinge, this ball will come down that will open the wall and the water will start flowing into the tank. Similar mechanism is present in our biological system. So, that is nothing but the product concentration. So, whenever any reaction or any pathway is running in our system, whenever there is a amount of output, the product formed from any reaction is more than required, automatically the entire reaction process is slowed down or stopped depending on the situation. This is a nothing but something called as feedback inhibition, something called allosteric inhibition. That means, the product formed from a given reaction has the ability to stop its own formation. This is nothing but a beautiful design of the nature to have optimum use of any process. No process should run unwantedly which can endanger our system. So, good example usually occurs in our hormonal mechanism. You can see here, we have hypothalamus, we have pituitary gland and adrenal cortex. So, what happens is the first phase will be hypothalamus will uh, stimulate by corticotropin releasing hormone to pituitary gland. Because of this stimulus, pituitary gland will release adrenocorticotropic hormone ACTH which will stimulate the adrenal cortex which will release the hormone glucocorticoids which is required for our health. 
whenever the glucocorticoid secretion becomes too much than required, it will go have a negative feedback loop both on the pituitary gland as well as the hypothalamus. Because of this mechanism there, so uh, now as the more and more corticosteroids are present in the system than required, it will inhibit the hypothalamus to prevent release of more CRH. Also, it can inhibit the pituitary gland to release more amount of ACTH. Hence, there is no more additional stimulus for the adrenal cortex. So, the hormone is auto regulated. Similar mechanisms are available in all the major pathways in our system. What are the other possible application of this concept? which can be used for our treatment. You can see porphyria, porphyria all of you know is a congenital defect in heme synthetic pathway. It is a unfortunate that congenitally one enzyme is deficient is not possible to replace it. So, only and uh, one more important problem is uh, this uh, uh, because of decreased formation of the heme, the intermediates something called porphyrins are gets elevated in the system which are highly photoreactive that leads to severe skin reactions and uh, 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 injury in means uh, cartilages gets damaged deformed because of the skin uh, photosensitive reactions. So, the patient will be having unwantedly lot of suffering. How to get over this? By the knowledge of this feedback inhibition the doctor will give you hematin. Hematin is the end product of heme synthesis as heme. So, if it is hematin is artificially introduced into the system using the same logic I shown in the previous slide, hematin will go and inhibit the entire pathway of heme synthesis. So, no more porphyrins will be formed. So, there will be whatever the symptoms will be automatically will reduce and he will get the benefit. So, next, next some the the to complete the list, when you have one more factor, activators. Activators are nothing but the cofactors or coenzymes, which will further facilitate the action of enzymes. So, some of most of them are inorganic metal ions like magnesium, zinc, etcetera, and chloride, etcetera, which will help the enzyme to act effectively. So, the pr very presence of these activators will facilitate the enzyme reaction better. Let us now understand what is the application of these activators. So, important is the, you can see the diagram here, glucose is the important source of energy and it will form ATP by various metabolic processes. The first one being the glucose through glycolysis forms the pyruvate, is a one of the major pathway. In this pathway, we have an enzyme called as enolase, which require manganese for its optimum action as an activator. So, whenever and whenever we take blood for estimation of blood glucose in the tube, test tube, and if there is a delay in processing the sugar in the machine for estimation of glucose, the RBCs or the cells which are present in the sample are very much alive and active. They can still utilize this glucose. More is the delay, the chances that more and more glucose will be taken up into the cells and utilized for their own survival. If there is an extra delay, it may falsely reduce the actual glucose to a lower than actual. That means, a, it may so happen a borderline diabetes may become a normal if there is unwanted delay. This was understood scientifically and based on the knowledge of the metabolic pathways. Now, how to overcome this? The knowledge of the application that is requirement of a ma manganese for this uh, enolase enzyme is exploited by adding fluoride into the system. So, whenever we want to take blood for glucose estimation, we will add fluoride before into the tube. So, that is fluoride will inhibit the action of manganese interferes the action of enolase. So, that glucose metabolism in these cells is prevented until the estimation 
irreversible this is prevented irreversibly so that glucose remains the same as when it was drawn from the body one more important application is uh, the knowledge about mangan uh, magnesium here what happens is uh, in the same pathway glucose for our beating heart you know that our heart beats 24 by 7 continuously non stop so to have that much of power it requires continuous supply of energy and glucose is a predominant one of the predominant source of energy for the beating heart so again glucose has to move through the same process called as glycolysis and this glycolysis has three important enzymes named as kinases first is the glucokinase next is the phosphofructokinase and the pyruvate kinase wherever the word kinase comes they require magnesium for their action whenever the person the patient is having magnesium deficiency these three kinases will not function effectively so much so the glucose even though is present in the system in his body may not be able to release the energy effectively so that means it can cause a compromise seriously seriously compromise the functioning of the heart and that person can come to you with a cardiac arrhythmias arrhythmias is nothing but very irregular beating of heart ineffective irregular beating of the heart so minute the cardiologist sees a person is having arrhythmias he will immediately ask the magnesium level in the patient if at all it arrhythmias need not be only because of magnesium deficiency but is one of the important reasons and by simple supplementation of magnesium in the diet can cure the patient this is the application one of the important application of knowledge of activators on the action of enzymes thank you for your patient attention i hope you understood the various factors which affect the action of enzymes and their clinical applications